These two controllers completely dominated NRG. And I know what you're thinking. A Viper? On a scent? How can this troll pick and another smoker carry a team? Isn't that Jet's job or something? Well, hear me out. These two did actually carry Cloud9 against one of the best teams in the world. This double controller meta has been springing up everywhere, and teams are finally starting to hop on board the smoker hype train. But what makes these team comps so good? Why are teams sacrificing the overwhelming utility that another initiator would provide, or the extra explosive power of another duelist? Well, you're about to find out. Their combination of amazing setups, game sends, and teamwork were an absolute spectacle that every Valorant fan needs to watch. Cloud9, Jake, and Rooney have proved themselves as world-class players, and in this game, these two completely smoked out NRG. Wouldn't it be nice to have a little robot buddy that would tell you everything you're doing wrong in your games? Well, let me introduce you to Valorant Tracker, the sponsor of this video. Valorant Tracker is a free-to-use app that tracks your every single stat in Valorant. Literally everything. You can review your match history, your performance levels on any day of the week, your agent stats, how well you do on each map, or what your best weapon is. And there's somehow more to this. There's also an in-game overlay that shows your teammate's stats right away in Agent Select. So you can adjust your playstyle to synergize well with your team as soon as you meet them. It also keeps track of your stats in-game and in real time, meaning it helps you adapt on the fly. So what are you waiting for? Try out Valorant Tracker for free using my link down in the description below. Both teams have one map each, both winning their respective map picks. But this round is crucial to both teams. Cloud9 have forced into this one and are all in. If they lose, NRG have the chance to go up big in this decider map. Cloud9 start this round in a 1-1-3 default. But their setup is a bit different from what we're used to. Their Viper Wall extends through most of the map, allowing them to contest three different lanes or retake any of the space whenever they want to. And you can't see this one on screen, but her Poison Orb is also clogging up lane. In this setup, Viper is playing in spawn so she can't get knifed by KO. So no matter what, her wall or orb can go up whenever her team needs. And all the way back in spawn, she can launch snake bites for her killjoy to stall in lane. And speaking of killjoy, she has her mollies chipping down anyone heading to switch to close the door, and they're also cutting sight in half. She has them here because a lot of Sova's love bouncing shock darts off these windows to break her util that's in lane. This setup is going to be a pain in the butt to push through. So NRG are in a 4-1 setup, and they're going B but they start by playing super far back to dodge the sky utility. Doing this denies Cloud9 their only form of information. NRG starts the round with a KO knife lineup to apply pressure A main, and he heads back to B. And Cloud9 send a bird, but it doesn't tag anything. The attackers scale up B main, and as soon as they contact Killjoy's turret, they break it and go. Here we see that Sova Shock that I mentioned, Jet smokes to dash out of, KO flashes, Sova recons, and Omen paranoias. With all this utility, Victor flies over the top of Hut and onto site. This first blood will determine the round. But there's no time at all wasted, right? Victor just barely misses, and Zelsus punishes him for whiffing. But even if Zelsus didn't get the kill, Rooney would have gotten the trade with the snake bite that took down FNS. We didn't notice this at first, but he was already low HP because Zelsus was spamming B main with his guardian off his turret's contact. With this Molly, energy can't get onto sight. Rooney's smoke Molly combo just shut down this entire execute, and is buying plenty of time for Cloud9 to rotate. Som desperately pushes into spawn to try and make a play, but all of Cloud9 are already here and stop him. And Rooney takes down Artis on Boathouse and secures the round. We have a tied game and an important swing round. Cloud9 start in a 1-2-2 setup. Viper is fighting B main with her annoying smoke orb and mollies, Jet and Omen are fighting mid, and Killjoy and Sky are playing retake A with Killjoy's lockdown. And their Viper Ball is different, but similar to before. They can contest three lanes, take back map control, or in this setup, protect Killjoy's alarm bot. Energy start in a really passive default to dodge Sky's utility, but eventually are going to head into mid and split A site. Zeppa immediately sends out a bird for A main, and it tags nothing. So he heads back into spawn, jump spots mid for a little bit, and swaps places with Jake. He then sends another bird into B main, but that tags nothing too. Now they just got zero value from their birds, so they decide to get even more proactive. Leaf, Rooney, and Zeppa all group up in B main and fly out of Viper smoke as soon as Sky's bird recharges. With all of this map control, Cloud9 now must know that energy are going up catwalk. Now notice how Jake gets closer to tree and blasts all of energy with his paranoia. This blind forces the attack to back off, but little do they know is that Jake's flash just set up Leaf for a perfect backstab. 
them. This is gonna give them some information, but NRG aren't messing around. Look at them pushing all the way through Paranoid. Oh, you know, they're pushed back and right into them. Could be a bit of a trap play because they're not expecting it. The knives in his hands and 4K. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, that was the smoothest 4K I've seen in a long time. But can he get the ace? Leaf is just an animal and he's hunting for the clip. He wants the ace. Leaf can't finish it off without throwing. He leaves Sam alone in a one versus five and Cloud9 win the vital swing round. So because Leaf destroyed them last round, Energy are forced onto a save. But with Sam's Bulldog and Victor's Bladestorm, they still have a chance. They start in a 4-1 setup, but this time are playing up close to B main to get tagged by Sky's Flash on purpose, then move over back into mid for another A split. Cloud9 are in a 3-2 setup. They have Leaf hopping B main, and Sky and Omen are fighting for A main. On eco rounds, people love to try and go for ult orbs, but Cloud9 aren't letting Energy get them for free. FNS starts the round by knifing out of bounds in this area to tag anyone in B main or in market. They wait for the defense to respond, but nothing happens. NRG decide to scale up through mid and through catwalk, and with full information on both extremities, Xeppa wants to know what's going on in mid. He sends his guiding light and catches Killjoy on catwalk. Cloud9 knows something fishy is happening in mid, so they put up their viper wall and Viper herself starts to rotate over. NRG then rushes through tree and into sight. But now you see Zeppa and Jake tuck into A main, and this is a great way to react in the situation. These two are holding onto this map control with Jake one way and good positioning. Now, you don't have to fight for A main specifically, but by fighting for map control like this, you can heavily disrupt executes and make retakes much easier for your team. Whatever you're contesting, you just need to have a plan. So energy have the site, but they continue to fight into A main, as without it, they'll get pinched and lose. Victor takes down Zeppa, but Jake gets the trade. Now, if Energy can manage to kill Jake, that's two guns and a lot of map control for Energy. Jake needs to stand his ground through into the side of paranoia they have to be aware of it victor there's one but jake returns and he's still alive still in the action still in the fight one and, and still claiming kill I mean, okay, okay, I guess that's one way to do it. Jake bought just enough time for his buddy Rooney to swing out of heaven and stop the Sova from heading towards Jake. These long-range duels are exactly what you want to take against these Ecos. By hiding, you're allowing the enemy to close the distance and use their classics. So Jake and Rooney both confidently swung from A main and heaven to prevent this round from snowballing out of control. Both teams are back on full buys, which makes this another important round. Cloud9 start in a standard 2-1-2 spread, with both anchors on B again, Leaf poking and prodding in mid, and two more players fighting A. Now, Energy no Cloud9 have been fighting for A main close up to the entrance, so they want to punish. They start in a 2-3 setup, and are taking A main. Energy opens around with a recon, KO flash, and Victor gliding off this double stack to follow up as quickly as possible. Cloud9 were not ready for this. Zeppa and Jake run away, and Zeppa gets tagged by the dart. Victor throws a cloud burst to isolate himself from any potential sight players and goes for the kill. But he doesn't feel safe enough to extend any further. Now Crashies, he doesn't care. He drones out to encourage Victor to push deeper, tag Sky, and Victor sprays Zeppa through the smoke for the first blood. Keep in mind, this was only part of a default, and it was really aggressive. As a matter of fact, this default was so intense that all of Cloud9 have rotated over. But with this first blood, FNS starts to call for a fake. He tells Victor Victor to stay and hold a main since he has no utility. He then sends Killjoy, KO, and Omen to be main. The plan is to use Killjoy's lockdown, throw KO's knife, Omen paranoia, and Sam is going to ult to A instead of heading the back site like a lot of Omen players like to do. So they move into B main, activate the lockdown, but Cloud9 aren't biting. Sure, Rooney rotates over to try and molly and spray people down filing into sight, but Jake uses his ult and cancels it right away. A really popular use for Omen's ult is to use it for fast rotate. So by using it now, like this, and then cancelling it, he's trying to give energy a false sense of security that Cloud9 really are biting on this fake. But Jake recognizes that there's still a good chunk of time left on the clock. He trusts his gut and sticks to his setup on A with Jet. NRG were not expecting this. He does win it, but guess what? Yep, it's that bait and switch. That was the goal, that was the hope, yet it's still Cloud9 who are in control. Not being baited at all in the slightest. Spike down A. Finesse, last one standing. Positioning. Energy's fake fell apart this round thanks to Jake and his mind games. And this new guy is having a lot of fun. It's awesome to see him get hyped like this.
Cloud9 are in a great spot to give themselves a solid cushion heading into the attack side of a defensive sided map. They start in another 2-3 setup with both anchors on B and are getting proactive once again on A. NRG need this round for their momentum and to end the half on a good note. They're in a 1-3-1 default and plan on working Victor's attack op in mid. But this might be hard to do against a double controller comp and their constant denial of vision. The round opens up with Rooney immediately popping his Viper's Pit. Zelsis puts his turret inside of it and now B main is pretty secure. Pile this on their alarm bot in mid and nano to stall a B split and energy have a lot on their plate. They KO knife and flash for mid alongside a silver dart. Energy slowly start to move into mid but artist doesn't just want to give B main away totally for free. After all Viper still has two snake bites that could absolutely wreck energy later. It'd be huge if he can bait these out. So he moves into B main and hears this turret inside the ult. He throws down a molly of his own to break it. And this is actually a great tip for you killjoy players out there. If your team doesn't have utility to break anything, your mollies work just as well. But Zelsis sees the molly going off and immediately pulls back his turret. Now instead of his turret coming back online in 45 seconds, he'll have it back in 20. Great reaction. But Artis did manage to bait out a Viper molly. I mean, hey, given the circumstances, he did a pretty good job to bait out some util. Artis decides to finally leave V-Main and energy take more space in mid. Victor tries to smoke off the alarm bot, but ends up breaking it instead. His teammates head into catwalk and FNS starts applying a good amount of pressure so that Victor might be able to catch a defense off guard near market. And Zelsis, in reaction to losing mid, goes to close the door. But what he doesn't know is that he's about to swing right into an op. Where do they take this? Do they want to just push all the way through into spawn? Cloud9 have. Oh! Victor just misses Zelsis by a hair, and Energy are now in a rough spot. With their entry dead, 30 seconds left, and barely any map control, they're screwed. Not only that, but Cloud9 have three players fully pushed out of A main. Again, Cloud9 lost mid and received a ton of pressure in tree. Their protocols are to close the market door when they lose mid, like we saw Zelsis do, and if there's no pressure being made A main, they take the space. Now Energy are about to pay the price. Cloud9 to push down through Gelato. 25 seconds for this. What are you looking at, son? The Knife in his hands with the triple push, the reflank all the way down, and it is a disaster. FNS was staring at his minimap, wondering what to do next, and Jake blasted him in the head. This leaves two attackers left with 20 seconds on the clock. Crashies has a timing through heaven, but Jake denies the spike from heading that way and puts Cloud9 up 8-4. After a strong half from Cloud9 and their rookies, they plan on starting this one with a sneaky pistol strat. They have all five players grouped up outside of B main and they plan on using Rooney's Viper Lurk Wall. What this wall does is deny any defenders from spotting B main, but it allows the attackers to walk up behind it, drop it, and explode into their execute. So how are NRG going to deal with it? They start their pistol in a 3-2 spread with all their recon abilities on B and anchors on A. This wall might not work after all. The round starts and FNS immediately flings his KO9 in this cubby to snuff out this wall. But Cloud9 act quick. If too many of them get tagged, their strat is done for. Now luckily for them, I'm pretty sure the knife only tagged Omen and Jet. I mean, Viper's wall is still up, and you'll see FNS actually rotate off of B and into mid. So after successfully dodging the zero point, Cloud9 scales up with the wall, and Victor is just patiently waiting. Little does he know, when that wall drops, he's about to run into an entire army. Cloud9 players, but look at this. Through the wall. Victor just wants to disengage, but already pushing all the way into the side as a dash off their own. This pistol strat that Rooney cooked up has worked perfectly. The remaining defenders are rotating in and are forced to retake. But this Viper Wall also serves as a good post-plant smoke and blocks off market. Once it drops, Jake swings with full confidence, maybe a bit too much, and closes out the round. Up close here. Flash on the back is scared of being pushed with a knife out in the open. After dropping pistol, energy are forced to full save, but Victor buys a marshal. Now he whiffed a couple important shots in the first half, so now would be a perfect time for him to redeem himself. Their plan is to fight mid with a couple longer range weapons and eventually stack a site to try and at least do some major econ damage. But Cloud9 are being careful. They don't want to run into any aggressive plays the defense might be concocting. They start in a pretty laid back 2-1-2 default. Cloud9 start the round by putting their Viper Wall up and flashing through it with a Skybird. That bird goes Kaka! So they know someone is in mid. Zeppa turns his attention to A main and dogs it out to try and get a better read on the defense. But in response to them taking A main, Crashies lines up an arrow for tiles and it tags nothing. So energy think that mid is pretty safe, 
but it isn't. At the start of the round, Jake teleported on top of this double stack that gives him a good vantage point into mid. And for you Omen players out there, there's a ton of different spots you can teleport to to catch enemies off guard. You got these boxes, below Catwalk, in this cubby in A main, then you got C long on Haven, across C main on Lotus, or in this cubby near long unbind. By using these spots, you can swing into unsuspecting defenders. Then in future rounds, they'll be paranoid about you coming from these new angles that you've created. But are energy aware of these spots? Near the top of those standings, which is uh, quite unusual indeed. No one really Jake gets the first blood on the artist, and he barely manages to get past Victor's Marshall in mid. Cloud9 immediately start to group up and head towards B, and Zeppa heals Jake back to full. But since Cloud9 dogged through A earlier, Energy gamble stack the site. Unfortunately for them, they guessed wrong. Cloud9 end up with a free site, they hand the spike to Zelsus since he's the closest to his ult, and he plants. Now, just because the enemies are at full health and are in a good spot, that doesn't mean you can't play for exits and deal massive blows to their economy. Doing this makes your next rounds much easier. So energy smokes the stairs cross and you see them form into a strong crossfire. If Cloud9 just run out of sight, they're going to take major damage and potentially lose some valuable guns. But what they still have is Jake's paranoia since he didn't need it for the execute. It's smart that he saved it. And notice how Cloud9 aren't making any hero plays. They take the time to gather their thoughts, collect themselves, come up with a plan, and follow through. They know Victor is close by with a marshal, so energy don't swing until Jake sends out his flash. With it, they break up the crossfire and come out of this round with only two deaths. Not too shabby. Scared of the potential there for the B main push, but already fighting back. So you till use this energy trying to take these guns away, make it that much more expensive, that much more dangerous. They hold their ground. So Energy have strung together a couple of rounds and have built up some momentum to get back into this game. And with Cloud9 on an eco, this round should be easy pickings. NRG are in an interesting 2-1-2 setup. They must have some form of read because Victor is starting all the way back in Boathouse with his op while Silva and Ko are starting Market. What could they be doing in this setup? Regardless, their read is right and Cloud9 are grouped up ready to slam B site. The offense starts their execute with a flash through the window, they double swing A main, and Omen paranoids this lane. Crashies tries to fight back by shooting his recon on the wall from market, but he can't get the spam kill. And Victor obliterates Lee from back site, and Cloud9 are faced with a big problem. How in the world are they going to clear out this op? Victor swings from the other side and takes down Rooney. He jiggle peeks the other entrance, and then dashes out on the site. Okay, so I know this looks bad, but Ko was actually lobbing flashes for him in spawn. I think the setup was for Victor to get one or two and then have FNS flash for him so that he can dash out and get another with his shorty. Okay, I mean, honestly, I think this strat was a bit overcooked, but the idea is there. Regardless, Jake punishes with a quick headshot. FNS realizes that if Cloud9 gets that op, energy are toast. So he swings out of spawn, trying to recover the fumble, but Jake sits him down too. Jesus, what are Cloud9 feeding this kid. It's a three versus three, and this eco round has turned into a disaster for NRG. Jake smokes off stairs for his team, and Zeppa posts up on lane with his op. But Zelsus asks Zeppa to flash him into the smoke to try and get one with his close range stinger. So a flash goes out from back site, and NRG attempt their retake. Back online in a moment. They still have a paranoia, so... Whoa! Push through with the flash! Recon spots it, any spam for the walls will do it, but it's Cloud9! 1v3, dropping up, has to be the race, sweet Jake, collects, 4-4. Four, four. Jake was feeling it this round. Zeppa whiffed his op shot, but it, it didn't matter. Jake can't miss. Listen, I know Cloud9 fans were upset when they dropped Yay, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I think he left them in good hands. After a devastating loss last round, Energy have one more chance before being bumped down on a match point. They're desperate and they decide to force buy. And here we see a very similar setup to Pistol Round, from both teams actually. Cloud9 are all grouped up outside of B main and they want to lurk up and burst behind their Viper wall like they did at the start of the half. NRG are in their 3-2 setup. They have double info agents on B and both side anchors on A. Is this same pistol strat going to work a second time? FNS opens a round with the same knife into this cubby and it again tags a couple people, but not everyone. Then Victor is like, hey guys, wait a minute, I think I've seen this episode before. So he tells Crashies to use his recon to clear behind the wall. It lands, but Cloud9 didn't shoot it in time. Despite being in the same exact situation before, they didn't dedicate anyone to being the utility shooter. 
So the dart tags Leaf, and he gets sprayed down through the wall. Cloud9 just lost their primary space maker, but Zeppa hops up and grabs the ult orb, giving them their third potential ultimate into the round. I mean, hey, maybe they don't need Leaf this time. Cloud9 then try to poke around sight for a potential kill, so Zeppa uses his trailblazer and catches Victor out of position. FNS pops his null command, but it's too late. Victor falls, and it's a 4 versus 4. And Crashies doesn't feel safe anymore. If Cloud9 chooses to use their Killjoy lockdown, he can counter it with his own ult, but if he does, the attack can run him down and punish. So he slowly gets off site and decides to play the retake. But there's an issue. Cloud9 have their Viper's Pit online, so if they take the site, retaking it is going to be next to impossible. Uh, but I mean, hey, retaking without your Sova is also pretty hard. So pick your poison. He exits through spawn, Cloud9 activate their lockdown, and Crashies manages to get one through the smoke, but he gets traded out immediately. Cloud9 get the site, and this spells disaster for NRG. Rooney ults the site and clogs up the entirety of lane. If NRG decide to go through this side, they're going to come out with 1 HP left. And for you Viper mains out there, this is what a good ult looks like. You want to make sure that you're completely blocking avenues that the enemies are going to push through while at the same time giving yourself spots to play in. So how are NRG going to deal with this? Well, before they can even start their retake, Jake takes down FNS. Without their KO, Cloud9 now have the option to play for another huge win condition, their mollies. Jake tries to reposition to logs, but Som gets the trade. And as you can see, NRG try to go through the ult, but like I said, that's a pretty Pretty bad idea. And his feet, Zelsis. All about this timing now. All about the kill that he's about to collect and still in the pit. The decay damage kicking in. So, I'm running gun. Cloud9 need one more round to put NRG, a team that both rookies have looked up for for a long time, away. For their final act, they're positioned in a 1-4 setup. Something tells me they're going A, and NRG are set up in a standard 2-1-2 setup. Cloud9 start the round with a smoke on Catwalk, and Rooney mollies over on B to create some pressure. NRG knife A main, but Cloud9 have learned from their times over on B that they need to wait out the knife, so that's why they stayed back. They were waiting for it. So with Viper's Wall and Snakebite doing work, NRG decide to arrow B main to clear it out to make sure no one is walking up like before. But it's when this arrow hits that Cloud9 start contacting up A main. This is their timing to hit the site before the defense makes the read and rotates over. Line on wine, they know that it could be compromised for that jump spot. Okay, so I'm gonna spam down, but the, that's gonna be the go button. Leaf moves forwards, waiting inside of his smoke, just trying to fade out that utility! It's a flooded attempt by NRG. They're expending everything. Hunter's Fury cuts across with Zephyr falling. Maybe something could be done. A reflank into mid as well. It's all about this. Victor and FNS tried to flood on the site with a flash, but it didn't work. And Som tried to stay alive to buy time for his teammates to rotate over, but he couldn't survive long enough. It's a 4 versus 2, and the only upside for NRG is that they have Killjay's lockdown for the retake. With it, they can force everyone into A main and potentially save this round. We had the conversation earlier, Josh, at what point do we stop calling it up? Says, at what point do we just accept the Cloud9? They are that team. Lockdown's not going to be broken though, that's going to be afforded him quite a bit of space timing with the ult cancelled, so he doesn't get detained, and that crossfire setup is everything with the judge nothing to be done! Jake waited until the last possible second to use his ult to dodge the lockdown and shoot energy right in the back. And what a fitting end to this two-part series. Ever since these rookies have played for Cloud9, they've been anything but a downgrade. These two new pickups are vital pieces to this dominant NA team, and there are a lot of fans who owe these two an apology.